So here we go. How's it going everyone? My name is Frank and about a month from now I'm going to start my first semester in medical school which you know saying it out loud is kind of insane. But anyways I thought it would be really fun to just make this video about my mindset before starting medical school both because I think number one it would help me calm this weird mixture of anxiety and excitement that I'm going through at the moment but also because I think it would be really interesting to just look back uh, like a year from now and see the things that I was right or wrong about going like into school. So considering that this video is more of a ranty one, it's more of a self-therapy session for me, uh, it doesn't really have much value, I will split this off into five different sections, feel completely free to jump around, and if you don't want to watch this, don't. There's probably something much more productive to do with your time anyways. But if you do want to stay for the ride, let's begin by talking about the elephant in the room. Distance. I think that for most people, especially my like more American friends, college is like the first time they actually head out into the world and are responsible for themselves. They get their own place, they're responsible for their own chores, expenses, and basically have to learn how to live like alone for the first time in their lives. For me though, because first of all, I come from a Latin American family, so it's not as common to leave home so early. It's more common to stay for a longer time. And secondly, uh, my university was like 20 minutes away from my house, so it didn't really make sense for me to move out. Basically what I'm getting at with all this is that this is the first time I'm gonna be actually leaving my family and being responsible to live alone. And then on top of that, it's not like I'm gonna be two hours away, I'm going to be 30 hours away by plane, because if you don't know this, I'm actually moving to Australia where I will carry out the first two years of my medical school. I made a video about that somewhere up here, but yeah, it's pretty scary. Considering though that I will probably be spending most of my time studying, I mean this is medical school, uh, that will definitely make the time fly by a lot faster and honestly it's probably better for me to just be living alone during this period because by doing so it minimizes like the potential distractions that can affect my routines and study habits. But because my family is always very very close and always has something going on, I'm sure there's gonna be some sort of emotional impact along the way, especially considering that I'm going from a very sociable environment to living alone in another country for the first time. Thankfully though, since we don't live in the stone age, we have technology and I'm sure FaceTime and something like WhatsApp messaging or even social media is gonna come in very, very handy to maintain some sort of contact with everyone I love back home. And that's gonna be very helpful to me in that like adaptation process. My cousin also even got me this little like love box thing. Um, so the idea is that with an app, you can send pictures or messages to this thing. And when the box receives the message, it'll this thing will spin. And then you open it and it shows like the message that you sent your family members. And so it's very nice for my grandma who really doesn't know how to use technology. I could just send her like a picture. Oh. A picture of how things are going and then this will spin, let her know I'm thinking about her and then if she wants to let me know that she's thinking about me, she can spin this thing twice and then it sends me a notification to my phone. It's things like this that I'm sure will help me along the way like get adapted a lot easier and maintain that uh, connection with my family back home. By the way, if you're curious, there's a link in the description for this. And at the end of the day, at least for me, this is a temporary thing. I'm, gonna leave, I'm only going to be in Australia for two years. Then I'll be back in the US to do my clinical rotations and after that I will be back home with an MD degree. I will miss my dog a lot though. It's your baby, no baby dog. Next up is study habits. Right, so I've been out of school for I think like a year and a half now and this entire time I've been not studying. I've been spending most of my time working and trying to enjoy this little weird buffer zone between graduating from college and starting medical school and so I'm definitely a bit rusty when it comes to like sitting down and uh, studying a lot of material all at once. I remember back when I took the MCAT, I was studying maybe something around eight hours of like concentrated, focused study time every single day. And I'm pretty sure if I did that right now, actually I'm certain if I did that right now, I would definitely burn out like, like that. In a way, studying at that insane volume as I am like right now is equivalent to a deadlifting champion uh, taking an entire year off of training and then expecting to pick up where they left off without any adjustment period whatsoever. It's just not gonna happen. On the bright side, even though I can't actually get the reps in at the moment, I do still have all of that accumulated experience from that time that I spent studying through undergrad and for the MCAT. So I have some idea of what works for me and what doesn't necessarily work for me. And even though uh, everyone online says medical school will shatter like your preconceived notions about being a good and efficient student, 
like I said, having all of that background experience, I think is definitely more helpful than not, since I have an idea of what habits to at least try to establish from day one to be more successful than not. Which leads us to the tools that I plan on using. In my experience, at least, one of the best study tools out there is known as Anki. If you haven't heard of it, it's basically a spaced repetition flashcard program. Uh, you write up flashcards, you put them into Anki, and then Anki, using an algorithm, will only ever show you the flashcards that you keep getting wrong. So basically, it tests you on information that you have a very hard time understanding and doesn't test you as much on what you already know. It's what I used to get a 513 on my MCAT, what I used to get straight A's in my upper division science courses in college, and what I hope is like super efficient in getting me through medical school. Rather than build up my own Anki deck from like zero, I think I'm gonna try out a very comprehensive deck that has been built by the sleuths over at the r slash medical school subreddit. It's called On King. Uh, link in the description below. And hopefully the strategy is to start using the On King deck since like week one of medical school and then slowly and surely make my way through it because it's like a ginormous uh, Anki deck. And then by the time my boards come around, I'll be more than adequately prepared to succeed in them. Besides that, for note taking, I do think that Rome Research is a potential candidate for my like main core note taking app. If you haven't heard of it, Rome Research is in is a unique like note taking app because it doesn't really use like the folders and then subfolders strategy or organization that most apps like Notability, Word, or even Notion use. Uh, Rome basically links ideas to other ideas by using keywords and so it makes this weird mesh of information where it tries to simulate how your brain actually stores info and so I think this might be very interesting to approach medical content because you can link different things together in a way that might not make sense from a hierarchical structure but might make sense in terms of like just how your brain naturally organizes information. The other candidate that I'm thinking about to take notes is Notion. I think Notion is really great for everything. I particularly like using it to manage the like content calendar for this YouTube channel, my blog and things like that. Um, the thing is Notion is more of a top-down hierarchical matrix in terms of note storage. And so that's why I kind of want to try Rome first. But if Rome doesn't work, I think Notion is definitely the place I'm gonna end up taking the majority of my notes in. Finally, for time management, uh, it took me a while to find an app that I really liked to keep like my schedule. I wanted something that was a to-do list and something that was a calendar, but like all in one. And then I found TickTick. And TickTick does exactly this. It has your to-do list for the day. It lets you track habits. So you have some sort of routine to keep up. And finally, it can organize everything inside of a calendar. So this is what I'm planning to use to keep myself like on schedule and organized throughout my studies. And you know, we'll see how it goes. I've been using it for about three months now and it's been going very well. It's very addictive to just check things off your to-do list. And I think it's going to be a very powerful key into establishing healthy routines because uh, actually one of the notes I took from the book 101 Essays That Will Change The Way You Think by Brianna Wiest goes something like, Routines are important because they take things off our mind, they emotionally center us in what we're doing, they eliminate uncertainty and fear in everyday life, and they allow us to enter into a flow state easier. So I'm definitely counting on TikTok to help me maintain some sort of order in my life. And even though all of these tools will theoretically help me have a successful semester, I do think it's very important to go into medical school knowing that I will probably suck at like a lot of things initially and there will be a learning curve. I'm very well aware that while I have an idea of how I wanna strategize, plan out my studying and how I wanna study, uh, these like approaches that I have might not be the best ones. They might have been the best ones that worked for me in the past, but I think it's very important to have some sort of an adaptive mentality when it comes to very difficult or new things that come into your life and that you have to deal with. So I guess this is more of a growth mindset thing where you have to sort of strategize around with what you have and what you're currently experiencing rather than relying on the more traditional methods that have always just worked for you in the past. And so I think it's very important to approach med school as with most things in life with this idea that initially things are probably going to suck. We're gonna be very inefficient. I'm gonna be very inefficient. I will probably uh, not be doing things the best possible way. And that's completely okay, I think that's normal. Uh, because along the way we gain experience and eventually we will get to a point where through struggling a bunch and learning a bunch that we realize what the best strategies to use will be. For example, even though I do think that Anki is the best thing to come since sliced bread, uh, it doesn't mean that it's the best tool for 
medical school for me. And so that's something I just have to consider through experience and testing it out and seeing if it actually is a tool that saves me time and efficiency or if there's some better way to do things that I just haven't necessarily come up with yet. So in other words, I'm fully expecting to be overwhelmed at least initially as I slowly adapt to the massive like load work of medical school. They do say it's like trying to drink water from a fire hydrant. Uh, so that's gonna be an interesting experience. But I am overall very confident in my ability to adapt over time and come up with more efficient ways to do things as I learn what is required of me to be successful. Finally, I just wanna talk about how this like whole experience feels because it's weird. On the one hand, it's pretty scary because I'm going to a different country. I will be super far away from my family for once. Uh, will probably be lonely in the beginning at least. Hey doggy. And on top of all this, I'm going to be in one of the most challenging experiences of my life in terms of like studying and how much material I'm going to have to cover. From browsing online, there's like two different camps of people and they talk about their experiences in medical school very, very differently. Um, the first side says that medical school is literally you like sitting in front of a desk, studying like, I don't know, 15 hours a day, something insane, that there's no room for hobbies, there's no room for other things in your life, social activities, not even like dating. On the opposite end of things, there's a whole cramp of people who say that medical school actually has given them more free time than an undergrad just because they don't have to worry about work or other obligations taking up their time. All they really have to do is sit down and study. I'm assuming there's like a middle ground somewhere there. Like there's actually not that much free time, but also you're not glued to your desk 24 seven. Uh, but it doesn't make the experience any less stressful just because it's still like an unknown to me. And I think unknowns can be kind of scary, at least initially until you actually like do the thing and then you realize, oh, it's like, it's not that bad. So yeah, for now it's scary but I assume that when I start, I'll figure things out and it'll be fine. On the positive side, outside of like the whole anxiety of moving to a different country and like the intimidating factor of knowing that my life will significantly change in the few next few coming months, I'm genuinely very excited to be starting school because I've always had this weird like background anxiety uh, and feeling behind all of my other friends because a lot of them have already started their careers. They've gotten raises, they're getting ready to buy houses and then I'm here and I'm still students, uh, just because the medical career is very, very long. And so I do feel slightly behind in life, but starting year one already gets rid of a lot of that anxiety because at least I'm underway, you know, like in four years, I will finally have some sort of salary. And so all of this just helps get rid of a little bit of that background anxiety of being behind in life. The other thing is that even though I'm very sure I'm gonna miss my life back at home, I'm very happy to finally have like my own space. So I'll be able to organize it however I want. I can buy whatever foods that I wanna buy. I can, I don't know, put a pineapple in the middle of the living room for no reason, just random stuff. Since it's my space, I can do whatever I want. And so this is a power that I have for the first time in my life and I'm probably gonna abuse it. So overall, I'd say I'm at a healthy mix of what I'd like to describe as a stressful excitement. I think that's like the optimal way to describe my my current mojo going into uh, medical school. If you're curious, by the way, about why I'm going to the complete opposite side of the world for medical school in Australia, I made a video about that somewhere up above where I go pretty into it. I, went, I go into my uh, pre-med background, the decisions that led up to me going into medical school in Australia, my application process, and the specific school that I'm going to. So if you're curious, that's linked up above. Um, yeah, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and productive rest of the day and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Yep. Ah, doggy. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. There you go.